In today's video, we're going to show you how to take a pile of oak lumber like this and turn it into a nice TV console with bookcase like this. Since I don't have a work vise big enough to hold these pieces, I've just clamped it to the table and I'm going to be drilling in here. So let's get started. So I'm edge joining the lumber to make it wide enough to be able to work as a top as well as three shelves. I have a mark right here and I line it up to this mark on there. Dow jig I made this is a two tops and a shelf for the TV console table I'm building and so I used the dowels to join the two panels to make it big enough so this will be 18 inches by 48 the same for this and the shelf's a little bit smaller than that so for all the pieces you take and you plane off the saw marks or burn marks or use a card scraper either one of those will work just fine Okay, here's a glue up of the shelf frame. And the corners are pat flat and square. And I've measured diagonally across. And that's flush there. And you can see this squares in the corner. That's good. And so basically, since the two end pieces overlap the two side or front and back rail, all we have to do is put a little pressure clamp in here. So we've glued these here. Then we'll come back and screw the dowel holes in this way and both boards at one time. Okay, I got my three shelf boxes made. Boxes will be assembled with these 10 slats, five on each side between two of the boxes end to end. So my next task is to come along here and to drill the holes in the ends so the slats can be attached vertically like this. Okay. Okay, on this end pieces, I have went ahead and uh, clamped them together so the measurements and markings will be identical because I'll mark both boards at the top. So this board will be, the top pieces will be the bottom, so in the seam here will be where the markings go. The center, seven and a quarter, then I have to go two inches from that since this is exactly two inches wide. I'll use this as my center point and we'll mark that there. And I guess we can just use the second one and mark, keep that one flush there. And then we have that one next there and so that so now we go the other way. So we come here and marked two inches. And the next block makes it another two inches. So we have one, two, three, four, five slats that'll be there. So now we can drill our holes and put our slats in. These slats, I use a quarter inch drill to cut the quarter inch holes, which are smaller for the slats, which are only one inch by three quarters wide. The dowels in the end frame of the frame units are three eighths inch dowels. I'm drilling quarter inch size dowels into the end of the slats. And because the dowel spacing in my dowel wizard is exactly one inch, I can drill two of these slats and one clamping because the dowel centers are one inch apart. 
because the slats are one inch wide. So after all my slats are cut and I have dowels in them, I do a dry fit on one end to make sure that I have the right length of dowels cut. And so I had to trim one or two of them to make sure that they fit flush to the frame. Now I'll take the assembled frame unit with the slats in both ends and I'm seeing if I have any overlapping slats higher than the frame unit and if so I'm just taking my plane and planing that smooth so we have a nice transition between the two. Alright so here's a tip having your lumber your projects and you're working around the shop and there's a difference in having a rough cut and a final cut. You can see this jagged end for this shelf is still a rough cut. Well this piece here is 16 inches. 14 and a half is going to be the final dimension. We're going to cut off this edge here and then we'll finish up that and square off both ends. The reason you want to do that is you're going to move this around the shop a little bit. I've already sanded this to 120. But as you move it about you're going to bump the corners, bump the edges, and you don't want to have to come back and redo those. So leave it into the rough cut until you're ready to start assembling that particular piece. So after you do a glue up of the top and the shelves, you need to smooth out the top. So you start with a plane to get the edges all smooth. And after the plane, you'll go to a sander, whether it's 80, 120, 220, to finally get your boards ready for her assembly. I'll show you how quickly you can mark your things with the one, two, three block. So this piece is two inches wide. And I want to be able to mark the center of this board one inch in and have this line in here. So I know this is two inches precisely. So I center this on here. Then I will come in and put this up to one edge because these are exactly one inch on the edge and I draw my line and that's centered there and I want my center of that to be one inch there so now I have this perfectly centered within this board to drill my dowel holes all right the best way I found for centering these holes is I have my line that I've determined exactly where it's gonna go and I have the one inch end mark as measured with my one, two, three block. So after I have my jig and I know I have its eye centered and I drew a couple of lines to see on the width of this, if that was in fact centered, then I take my square in here and I match that up to there and I'll come in and clamp my square so it doesn't move and then once I have that tight then I can attach this with a clamp so I use my F clamp after I have this line centered off that one inch mark I'll clamp this right on top of here to drill one hole then I'll change the clamp and drill the other Because I'm drilling through the leg and into the side of the rails, I'm not doing a through dowel, 
I have tape on my drill bit to mark the depth that I'm using. The dowel holes in the legs are already cut and in this step all I'm doing is drilling the dowel holes into the side rails. You can buy your dowels and cut them or you can make them and it's a lot more fun to do that. Look at that. That's neat. Then you just taper the end to make it easy to insert. So this is a glue up of the uh, leg. It's attached to the shelf unit. So you got to be quick because you got six different places on the legs you're putting the dowels. So you got to put glue in the holes, put the dowels in, put the glue on top of the shelf frame, put glue in those holes. Got to got to hammer in your dowels and then assemble it on the shelf and then hammer in the dowels into the legs and put the clamps on. Whew! That's a lot of stuff to do. And that's just one leg. Then you got to do it three more times. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I put a little light chamfer on the underside of the top just for aesthetic reasons. So I got the top with the uh, little bevel, router bevel on it. And these are the end panels. So these panels were originally going to be a quarter inch panel, but rather than try to make a quarter inch, I just cut this out of a full three quarter inch and I'll just put some stops in the back for that. As a matter of fact, the other end, is actually oak plywood. I'll stain it and make sure it matches. We have kind of pre-stained look because I wanted to get all the stain in between the slats and behind the slats before I put the shelves in. In panel right here, what we're doing is putting in the backing unit. So we have these blocks that I have made. The same thing over here. And this is just off this shelf so this will slide in so the shelf had to be cut to where it was a quarter inch shy of the uh, length of the rails so when we put in our end piece it'd be recessed like this so we have this just inset just a little bit so we have a little uh, relief right here and gives a little feature so that's what we designed the end piece to look like. So, we have so the next step was to uh, stain the top and the shelves. So we had uh, top and three shelves and then we glued the bottom shelf in. We put a little glue on it and we clamped it up and we'll use a different attachment method for the next shelves. So stay tuned and you'll see how we deal with that. Alright, so this is the shelf that we're going to install at this level. So we have finished both sides of this. And this little lip right here, you can see that lip is going to be on the back side because that's going to be a bookcase and that will prevent the books from being able to slide out the back. So I've turned this table upside down. So we're going to mount this in here and we'll put some uh, support clamps in here so we can do this. So we're going to drill these dowels into the edges of our shelf to hold it in place. So I have my drill collar set for my depth of my dowel, so that's the max depth that I would want. Alright, here we go. just to make sure that our board doesn't migrate after we have a hole drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and stick in a dowel in here. Hold that in place, prevent that from going up and down. Same thing here, we're just gonna insert that in there to hold that, go back and drill that. Okay, that one's not going to move. All right, so I'm going to glue up these two. The first thing I want to do is get the sawdust out of the hole. I'll just shoot a little skin there down in there and it just pops it out. Pretty easy. I'm 
bring my frame to be able to mount the top on the frame. So I'm using these figure eight fasteners and I've cut here with my little Forstner bit just enough so these little guys will fit in here like this. It has a recessed on this. You screw these in and then you lay the top on and then you come in here and screw from the other side. And these have just enough flexibility to allow for wood movement for the top. So we have all those done. We cut them all the way around and that'll be the next step that we the have. The first shelf is too close to the top so I couldn't put in the figure eight fasteners. So I'm electing to attach the top or the shelf with Z-clips. So I'm using the biscuit cutter to cut the slots for the Z-clips. So this is a Z-clip. This part goes into the groove and that part screws into the top. You put your top down, you put your clip in there, and you screw through there. Then you have a multiple number of Z-clips and that holds it in place. Okay, so I have the top attached with my figure eight fasteners. And now I'm going to basically put in the top shelf. I'm going to glue in the end panels. So for purposes of saving time, I didn't show you some of the staining and finishing that we have, but this is an early American Minwax wood finish that we used on here. And we used a lacquer for our finish. Two primary reasons. One, we did not want to use a water base because a water base finish is going to raise the grain. And, and oak is such a open, poor grain it would require sanding between each one of the coats. So we used the oil base and the lacquers are very nice because you don't always have to sand it between coats. Matter of fact, I have three or four coats on the top here. I didn't sand once until I was ready to do the last coat. 320 finish with the lacquer and it's smooth as a baby's behind. So consider that in the next project if you're doing oak Doing something with a lacquer or an oil-based finish, it makes for a nice, smooth surface. So if you liked our build on the TV console table, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our builds, hey, subscribe down below. Click the button. And as usual, come back and see us real soon.